Hi, and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus. So this video is about shaded pole motors. Now you probably don't know what a shaded pole motor is. Uh, this is a very common type of AC alternating current motor. Uh, they are very good. They're generally low power. They're used in things like fans. So like tabletop fans, desktop fans, um, floor fans, box fans, refrigerator cooling fans, very, very handy. Sometimes things like hair dryers. Pretty much any time you need a small, low-power fan to move some air, most likely it's a shaded pole motor. So um, some of the characteristics of these of these motors are they are very, very cheap, and you'll see why in a minute because I'm going to show you the insides of one. They're very, very simple, which makes them very, very cheap. Uh, because they are simple and cheap, they're also, and also because of the way they work, they tend to use very little power, uh, but they're, they're not very efficient. They have an efficiency rating of something like 26%. So I'll show you a bit more about that in a second. And as it turns out, they're actually extremely easy to fix. Now, most of my friends, when I say, you know, uh, yeah, I, I fixed the motor, the, the, one of the cooling motors, air circulating motors, uh, compressor cooling fan or whatever, in my refrigerator, they're like, whoa, I could never do that. And even though these are sort of like mechanically minded people, you know, uh, even even engineers, like mechanical engineers, they won't touch anything electrical. Uh, when we're talking about shaded pole motors, we're talking about something that is actually, it's it's technically electromechanical. And as long as you just simply see that, that's those are the, the, the wires, that's where AC power goes. You just, if you cut the thing, or if you unplug it, you can't electrocute yourself. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to show you in this video how you can service uh, these common shaded pole motors and save yourself some money because actually it turns out that they're so simple inside that if you're handy with a screwdriver even, you can fix one of these. You need basically a few little tools and uh, some light machine oil and most of the time you can get these things back up and running. Save some bucks and Bob's your uncle. So, okay, quick recap. I'm not going to go into crazy detail about how shaded pole, you know, induction motors work because it's like when you get into like how AC motors work, um, it's fascinating, but it's one of those things that's very difficult to wrap your head around. So I'll just give you kind of like a quick recap. So um, this is your basic shaded pole motor. Uh, you might recognize it as kind of like a common small AC motor. And it's pretty simple. You've got like layers of uh, conductive metal. That's basically the, the metal core. Then at the bottom there, you have your primary winding. That's basically AC, live and neutral, goes on either end of the copper wire that's wound around there. That's your primary winding. Uh, you've got obviously the axle that's connected to that rotor thing, which I won't go into the details of how, how the, the rotor is essentially some chunks of metal stuck together in such a way that the motor works. And then you'll notice this little, uh, I've marked it here as a secondary winding, that's actually the shading coil. Now, as you probably know, when you have a single phase alternating current, right, one phase, uh, when you put that into a motor, as we know, the, the current goes, you know, kind of goes like this, and it's, it's a sine wave, so the current switches directions, you know, X number of times a second. So normally, if you applied that, that alternating current to one of these motors, what you'd end up with is basically the, it would kind of turn this way a little bit, then the current would switch directions and it would turn back, turn this way, turn back. It'd kind of wobble in place, more or less. So what they do is they add this shading coil. And all it is is, uh, there's, there's several different ways of doing it, but in this example, it's simply a, a fat turn or two of copper wire installed in such a way that when the primary coil is energized by your single phase AC, that creates an electromagnetic field, blah, blah, blah. It also induces a current in that shading coil. And as we know, when you induce a current in something, it creates its own electromagnetic field. That electromagnetic field, that secondary field, just happens to be out of phase with the single phase AC that you're using to power it. And that's what actually, instead of making it wobble, it actually makes it start turning. Now, the drawback is that it's permanently connected to the circuit. So you've always got that shading coil uh, in operation. That's one of the reasons why these shaded pole motors are less efficient. Because uh, initially, that shading coil gets it moving, it gets the axle turning. But after it's turning, you don't need it anymore. But because it's such a simple design, it's still there, blah, blah, blah. Um, if you know anything about AC motors, you probably have heard of like capacitor start motors and such. Um, yeah, that's a different concept. It's, it's, uh, you use a capacitor, uh, when you connect a capacitor, um, across like another coil, 
it causes the same thing, a phase shift, and therefore your single phase motor starts turning. Once it starts turning, that capacitor is pulled out, or in the case of a, a permanent split capacitor, PSC motor, whatever you call them, uh, you actually have two sets of windings. One has the capacitor, the other doesn't. That gives you your two phases, hence you have rotational motion. So anyway, I will not go into the technical details of how that works. Yes, that was not deep technical <laughs> details. Now, as I mentioned, these motors are not very efficient. You get something like 26% maximum efficiency. Uh, as a result, they also have a low power factor. And obviously, when you have a, a motor that, say, uses like 10 watts uh, to move actual air, it might consume like 40 watts of electrical power. That extra 30 watts is going to go somewhere. It's going to be lost in the, the friction of the bearings as the, as the fan motor turns, uh, and also um, heating. So the, the motor housing will actually heat up. Uh, the benefit of this is that if you actually have one of these shaded pole motor fans and you just you just you know, grab the the fan blade carefully, or if you prevent if you block the rotor and then you apply power to it, um, the thing is not going to overheat like most motors do. Uh, it will get hot, but it won't overheat. Uh, it won't explode. It won't spark. It won't trip the circuit breaker. Uh, because they're so low power and because of their design, they're actually like relatively safe. Now, if you're trying to determine if the motor you're going to fix is a shaded pole motor, uh, well, first of all, it will look something like one of these. So in the upper left, we have kind of our initial example. Uh, in the lower left corner, you have kind of like the one that uh, I'm going to open up and fix and show you in a second. A uh, similar one in the lower right. And then in the top right, you have this kind of black cylinder thing. Uh, that's actually a shaded pole motor inside kind of a housing that may you may recognize that as kind of like your standard fan motor so uh, if you see a motor that looks anything like one of these uh, chances are it's a shaded pole motor you can also just take it apart and you'll see that it is one which i'll show you in just a second so uh, I recently had to replace, uh, I have a refrigerator, it has three of these fans. Two of the fans are inside, uh, you, you open the door and it, they're inside aimed like this, uh, actually rather like this. They, they suck the air up, cool it, and it gets recirculated. The third fan is actually up top, on top of the thing. There's a heat exchanger and it's uh, right near the, the, the actual refrigerator compressor. Um, the thing about these motors is that uh, they, because they, they waste a lot of heat, they're actually more adapted to, say, like uh, refrigeration applications, like the two motors that are inside the fridge that are recirculating cold air. Those will generally last longer than the one that's on the top of the fridge, uh, you know, pumping all the waste heat from the compressor out into the room. Because if it's, you know, you know if it, you're in the middle of like a steamy summer day or something and your refrigerator is working really, 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 really hard, that motor up top is going to be even hotter. The ones inside are going to be cool. They're going to be like, you know, a couple degrees above freezing and, you know, they'll, they'll last much longer. But there is one problem, and that is that uh, the ones inside the fridge, even though they stay cool, you may have problems with condensation. And that's where uh, the, the main issue with these things comes from, which is uh, the bearings tend to wear out. Now, I had one of these, and uh, basically the... The, the rotor was blocked, the fan wasn't moving, I opened it up, there's two of these side by side, and I'm going like, hang on, I mean, I put my hand on the one, you know, it's, it's the one that was just spinning, it was like relatively cool to the touch, I put my hand on the one with the blocked rotor, and it was like, it was hot, not too hot to touch, but, you know, doing what a shaded pole motor does, right, it overheats if it can't turn. Uh, but it wasn't damaged, so I took that one apart and I fixed it, and this is actually the, the hot one near the compressor. Uh, I replaced it so that I could keep this one, keep the fridge running, take this one, and show you how to actually service these things. All right, so off we go. This, this is uh, also a type of shaded pole motor. You can see it's uh, an EBM Pabst. It's, uh, well, at 50 hertz, it's 0.2 amps. And it says 31 watts or 7 watts. That's actually the two figures because, as I said, these things are like maximum 26% efficient. So 7 watts is basically like the power that your fan is going to use to like move air. And 31 watts is kind of like total power consumption. So if you do like, you know, 7 divided by 31, you get 
uh, I think it's 22.5% efficiency. Um, if you run this thing at 60 hertz, which I can't because I'm in Europe, but if you do, it's actually 30 slash 8 watts, which works out to be like 26.667% efficiency. And it also spins faster at 1550 uh, turns per minute instead of uh, 1300 revolutions per minute. So um, anyway, I've got it at 50 hertz. Uh, this is just, that's it. That's your that's your shaded pole motor. And um, whether the rotor is kind of stiff or blocked, you can't turn it. Maybe it's like bouncing back and forth and making a clacky clacky noise. Uh, so, well, what do you do? Well, you can buy a new one, but sometimes they're hard to find. So what I'm going to do is actually just take this one apart and show you what's inside. There's a little nut here. Well, yeah, nut there. I have to hold that with my finger and then I can... And then we just let the parts fall down, do that a few times. Kind of pull this off. And you see this, that's what your, your, your rotor looks like inside. Looks kind of, these are sort of like metal sheets and they're connected at the end electrically and blah, blah, blah. That, that gets into sort of like the electromagnetic aspect. But that's, that's the rotating part. And this shaft, which actually looks fairly good, fits down into a, what looks like a bearing down there, but we'll get to that in a minute. The rest of it is just this thing, this, this coil. And of course, you can take the bottom off. So you see, that's the... It's actually a... It's not a bearing. It's, it's just a sleeve. It's a sleeve bearing. That's kind of the key. But you see, this, this right here is the whole rest of the motor. Like, that's it. Uh, and you can... Uh, now, this one doesn't actually have a... Actually, it does. It has... You can see these are the primary windings. Primary winding, primary winding, primary... And then you see, you see that in there. Let's see if I can get a good angle here, because this is... There's like a copper band in there. And each, each one of these things has a... copper band and that little slit in the middle on the side, that's actually your uh, your shading coil. So this one is basically, they just feed AC to all four of these, and then each one of these, each one of these coils in there, they have the little shading coil, and that's what gives your little extra kick to start the rotation. So that's how you know it's a shaded pole motor. Done. Um, these things are incredibly robust. This fridge was actually subject to a voltage surge of about 500 volts that lasted, oh, uh, a couple minutes, unfortunately, and uh, that's a story for another time. That wasn't fun. Many things fried, and uh, this motor just kind of sat there and was like, meh, yeah, I don't care. Uh, obviously, the insulation on these windings is very good, and nothing melted or anything. So you take this thing apart, and you say, well, geez, you know, these windings aren't melted. Like, you know, everything looks really good, so what could the problem be? Well, the problem is often that. That's not an actual bearing. Uh, if you if you look at it really carefully, you go, hang on a minute, like nothing in there actually rotates. There's some little some little fingers in there that kind of hold it in place. So that appears to be a sleeve bearing. And if you look on this side, uh, in this motor you can't see it very well. Uh, it's a little hidden. I'd have to actually pull this thing off and, and get it out. But um, there's a similar bearing down in there. And uh, ideally, these motors are actually mounted horizontally. If you actually mount them like at an angle, uh, that tends to do weird things. So, um, for example, the one that I fixed, it was actually mounted, from your point of view, it was mounted inside the refrigerator at an angle like this, and it was sucking cold air up like this, right? So what happens if there's condensation? Well, all the condensation like, you know, drips down in here, and maybe this bearing is a good thing to check. So um, this one's a little harder to see, uh, instead of removing all this and everything, I'll just show you what to do with this one. The first thing is, you look at this bearing. You look at this axle, and you go, okay, well, you know, that's that's pretty good. It's not scratched, it's smooth. And that obviously fits inside this guy, right? So, right, the first thing you do is you clean, in, clean this sleeve off, and you clean this surface off, and then all you're going to do is take a bit of this stuff, this is light machine oil, and you're going to put some drops on the, on the, just a little bit on the shaft here, 
drops them down in here. And then when you put your motor back together, it's going to spin a lot better. Now, of course, you do the same thing for this bearing down in here. Uh, this one is, yeah, I would have to actually take this thing off to show you, but you basically repeat the same process and then you just put the darn thing back together and you're done. Now, notice when you're putting the thing together, uh, you can't do it wrong because you notice this thing, you notice this is the base of the motor. There's a little notch there. That's important because what happens is if you put this coil upside down, if you reverse either the rotor or the stator, it'll spin in the opposite direction. But fortunately, this one, they were smart, and they made it so that this is the bottom, and it has to go on here, because you have to fit that in there. Okay, there you go. And then you know that your rotor and stator are at, in, you know, properly remogenated, and uh, you won't have any problems. Sleeve bearings. There are several types of bearings, and the most common one that most people think of is a ball bearing, which looks like the one on the top there. A ball bearing is exactly what it sounds like. You have two surfaces and you have balls between them, and so the balls are actually, you, you have far less friction, obviously, uh, because it's only the, the top and the bottom of the ball that's pushing on the two sides of those rings, and then usually there's some, some grease or something inside, and there's shields on the side to prevent the grease from getting out, and of course ball bearings are very good, right? Very, very low friction. Uh, you know, good long longevity, blah, 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 right? The second type of bearing is the one on the bottom, which is a sleeve bearing, which is basically what's used in most of these motors. And one of the reasons that type of bearing is used is even though it's, it's higher friction, um, you machine the bearing and you machine the axle very, very, very tightly. Sometimes there's little notches on the bearing that hold a little lubricant, but basically you just got, you know, you got your bearing, you got your shaft, you stick the two together and there you go, right? You put a little light machine oil on, stick them together, and it's going to last for quite some time. The main benefit of using a sleeve bearing is uh, not only is the, the fan motor going to be uh, far less uh, shaky, less vibration, because if you have a sleeve, if you have a sleeve that's holding that rotor on two ends like that, it's, it's not going to be able to vibrate that much. That also means that uh, if you have it, say, like this one, using it as a cooling fan for a compressor running on top of a refrigerator, which vibrates a lot, the vibration of the compressor is not going to damage the fan over time because it's held by these, these big honking sleeves, the axle is held, and it can move this way and that way a little bit as it spins, but it's not going to like move in all kinds of directions and become damaged and wear the bearing because the bearing is very solid. So um, the kind of like one of the main failure modes of these things is just these silly sleeve bearings. They just, they get gunked up in the one that, the other motor that I fixed. Um, the front bearing was just like, there was all kinds of gunk. It was like there was condensation and like stuff had like dripped inside. And I basically just needed to blast it out with an air compressor squirter. Uh, and then I just re-oiled it, put the thing back together, stuck it back in the fridge. It works beautifully again. Um, it's about like five, six years old. And instead of, you know, buying a whole other motor, um, you just take it apart. You clean and lubricate the bearings, stick it back together, plug her in and off you, you're off and running. So, um, yeah. This is especially important in this day and age because, of course, like, right, if you want an EBM Pabst motor, like, good luck with that, uh, unless you live in the United States, because right now, no one in Europe or the rest of the world has any stock of EBM Pabst motors. Uh, the U.S. has several outlets that have, like, eight or nine in stock. Um, that's it. So, um, right, you have to buy, uh, you know, you can get one from Amazon. Usually it's a Chinese company, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, so... Anyway, that's how you repair a shaded pole motor. They are used in all kinds of things. Much of the time, uh, all you have to do is lube the bearings. And because these things are like so utterly sturdy and, you know, vibration proof and heat proof and all that, uh, it's very rare that the actual coil is going to be fried. Um, most of the time, it's just, right, it's just the bearings. One thing to note, if, if the sleeve and the axle are actually kind of scored or scratched, you want to make sure that the rotor here hasn't been rubbing on the, the, on the stator there, because if it has and it's scratched and it's been dragging, ye, then you're kind of in trouble and you'll need to replace it. But as I say, most of the time, you just lube the bearings and you clean it, lube, the, lube each end, stick the sucker back together, and Bob's your uncle. For more techie tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.